Welcome to the PICO Protocol Creation Tutorial. In this session, we'll walk you through the process of reconstructing the default advanced protocol from the ground up. Designed specifically for football, the advanced protocol captures intricate details of a match. It not only tracks the primary team's formation, called the main team, but it also diligently logs every pivotal match event like passes, fouls, cards, and more. Additionally, it's fine-tuned to pinpoint the specific players involved and even the zone of the pitch where the action occurs. Optimizing real-time interactions is at the heart of PICO. That's where our triggers come in. Once you've input your match events, PICO works its magic. With the press of a button, you can access an auto-generated report, shining a spotlight on the metrics you deem most valuable. This was a mere glimpse into the powerhouse that is creating a protocol. Now, let's embark on the next step, crafting our new protocol. Navigate to Protocols, and select New Protocol. Our next task is to populate our protocol with all the necessary elements, starting with the actions. For brevity, we'll fast forward through this part of the video. Next up, the state's elements. The inaugural state we'll add is named possession, which is a generic state. Following that, we introduce players, categorized under player's type. Take note that we're designating it to possess two concurrent states, especially useful for delineating passes. Our final state encapsulates the pitch zones, categorized as pitch type. Both the pitch zones and the possession are structured to host just a single active substate. The intricacies of this will become evident as we proceed. Let's pivot back to our elements to infuse them with sub-actions and sub-states. The process is straightforward. Consider a pass. Its sub-actions elucidate its results. Was it completed or did it falter? Add these determinations, then cherry-pick a color to represent their respective buttons. We'll expedite the walkthrough of the remaining sub-action elements for efficiency's sake. But, let's take a brief detour. Observe, for instances like the yellow card, red card, and player substitution, we've opted for visual cues we've affixed an image to the button for added clarity. Moving on to states. Within possession, our intention is to distinguish among the main team, an undefined state, and the opponent's possession. For real-time name replacements, we deploy specific codes. Percent %MT symbolizes the main team, while percent %OT signifies the opponent. Additionally, let's introduce some vibrant colors for differentiation. Transitioning to the player state, our first mandate is a vertical orientation. We're envisioning a lineup of 11 players, all plotted on a soccer pitch for authenticity. Next, delineating the pitch zones our aim is a tripartite division, essentially a 3 by one grid assign app colors, orient it horizontally, and overlay it with a the soccer theme. Beyond the actions and states we've manifested, two distinct elements emerge, titled left label and right label. These represent the live scoreline, designating the score for both Team 1 and Team 2 and no alterations are required. Next, we'll arrange our protocol's interface. Return to the previous menu and select Edit Layout. Drag the items to position them as needed. To adjust their size, simply grab the bottom right corner and resize accordingly. Technically, we could apply our newly created protocol to a match right now. However, you'll quickly notice the absence of automation. While we can record actions and set states, each step is a manual process, requiring multiple clicks. Consider a scenario where a pass fails. Without automation, we'd need to deselect the active players and switch ball possession to the opponent team manually. This not only takes time but also diverts our attention from the ongoing match. Yes, the data is captured, but efficiency is key, and now we will achieve it, in an easy and intuitive way, by adding triggers to our protocol. Alright, let's dive into one of the most crucial components of our protocol, the triggers. Starting with the pass action. Every action we create has a default finish action trigger. Think of it as a snapshot, it captures all relevant details from all the protocol states like players, zones, and possession. It then links them to the action along with the timestamp. This data is what we'll use for our reports later. 
For the pass action, when it's completed, we expect a couple of things to happen. Firstly, the player who made the pass should be deselected. This is where the drop state trigger comes in. It activates right after the action finished, targeting the player's state element. Next, we'd want our main team to secure ball possession. To do this, we use the set state trigger. After the action finished, it targets the possession state and designates it to the main team, the percent MT. However, if the pass isn't successful, the procedure changes. For deselecting players, we deploy the clear state's trigger at the action finish to the player's state. For changing possession, the set state trigger sets it to the opponent team, the percent OT, after the action concludes. Another type of trigger is the one that will be fired by the goal action. In this case it is a trigger to update the value of the main team score, for one of the sub-actions. And the opponent team for the other sub-action. For the substitution action, we have a unique setup. We won't need the finish action here. Instead, we'll introduce a trigger that sets the visibility of the player list. Turning to state triggers, for ball possession, we utilize the save new state trigger. This is very similar to the finish action, gets activated when there's a state change and saves the snapshot of the match to gather data for the report. Additionally, when possession shifts, we deselect all players. This is achieved using the clear state's trigger post state change, which targets the player's element. This configuration applies to all sub-states. Lastly, regarding the player's state, it's important to note that we don't need a snapshot every time a player is selected or deselected. So, we've opted to remove that. This decision keeps our data clean, avoiding saving useless information. Now let's see these triggers in action. Let's create a new match with our protocol. First we will set up our team lineup and formation. Then start the clock. With two players selected, we will complete a pass. As a result, we have the first player deselected, the pass author, and the ball possession set to the main team. Another pass, this one failed, resulting in both players deselected and the ball possession set to the opponent. When a goal occurs, the scoreboard is updated, first for the main team and then the opponent. By clicking the substitution button, the player's list is shown. To finish, by changing the ball possession, all players are deselected. On the events list, we can see all the snapshots taken from the finished actions and state changes, including a preview of the saved data. Let's finish by adding all the other triggers. And now, we'll move on to customizing the report. The report template is automatically generated, crossing all the actions and states. However, not all of these elements contain relevant information, or they might simply not be of interest to us. So, as we scroll through the items, we can easily toggle them on or off. For instance, shots mapped onto pitch zones aren't significant to us, nor are corners, goals, and so forth. And there we have it. The report template is set up, showcasing only the information we wish to see during or after a match. To test our advanced protocol, fully implemented, let's kick off a new match. As before, we'll set the starting lineup and get the clock ticking. Now, let's register a few actions, set the states, and note down the involved players. At any point, we can peek into the event's history and see the updates in real time. To illustrate, let's perform a substitution and observe its impact on the report. We'll continue adding actions and updating states throughout the match.
Time to unveil our automatically generated report. Here's our template, showcasing only the elements we activated. Included is a table detailing player actions and another for player interactions. We also get insights into the formation history, reflecting both the average actions and the dynamic formation shifts during the match. This wraps up our video tutorial on crafting a complex protocol from the ground up, adding elements, setting triggers, and configuring the report. With a tailored protocol, you're empowered to log anything you wish, whether it's for sports or any other event.